And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world from Mirbez Sports Hall here in Al Fajira, UAE. This is the main event of the evening. Three five and a round scheduled in the welterweight division. The three judges scoring this bout at cage side are Andy Sledge, Dean Weir, and Ben Cartledge. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Gunner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Fight fans, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, is a mixed martial artist standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed in at the welterweight limit, 171 pounds. A 34 fight veteran, he brings 23 victories, 11 defeats, and joins us from Chelmsford, Essex, England. Here is Jack the Stone Mesa! And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He is a boxer standing 5 feet 8 inches tall. He too weighed in 171 pounds and brings an outstanding record consisting of nine victories. Just one defeat and one draw. He fights out of and represents Fairbanks, Alaska, USA. Here is Colin Ryder. Once again, referee in charge, Mark Goddard, with the final instructions. Colin. Now, gentlemen, you both understand the rules you're fighting under. You listen to me at all times. Keep yourself protected at all times. If I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves. Let's do this. So, Mark Goddard, the third man in the cage for this main event at Cage Warriors Fight Night 8. We have Jack the Stone Mason in the longer black British fighter, wrestling trunks. Colin Reuter, the American, in the shorter black wrestling trunks. See how quick Colin Reuter tries to put hands on Jack Mason. Jack Mason trying to close the distance quickly with the knee pick. Oh, big, that big right line. hand over the top. Wow, he throws that like a baseball pitch from a mile away. Oh, all the way from back in the changing yeah. room. Jack Mason able to avoid. Goes back to his bread and butter, which is closing the distance and grinding down on his opponents. Yeah, good early position here for Jack Mason. The cage might impede his route to the back a little bit, but he's got good body control here. He's got one hook, and he's going to really try and constrict and stay as tight as possible to the midsection of Colin Reuter. Good attempt at the, uh, the old school judo roll from Reuter. He, he only just made weight in the dying seconds yesterday. Let's see how much that has an impact on his performance, if indeed it becomes a, a stretched out contest. Oh, Reuter's starting to try and wrestle, he's looking for that leg, but he's got to be a bit careful here. If Mason can uh, use his legs to, to pin his arms, he can end up with a crucifix position here. But I expect a lot of grinding top control from Mason in this position. Yeah, he's a huge welterweight, spent most of his career fighting in the middleweight ranks. If Reuter can pull that leg out, he can reverse this position thoroughly. Mason making use of his elbows there. Heavy hips from Jack Mason, but Reuter escapes. All the guys at the Tsunami Ooh. Gym are desperate to see the hands of Jack Mason come into play. He was very quick to point out that he too has knockout power when everyone was talking about Reuter. But it's yeah, back I mean, the wrestling Jack that we see. Jack Mason's boxing is excellent. He he hits phenomenally hard. The problem is, in a lot of his fights, he hasn't committed to coming forward and throwing his hands. There were quite a few when he first started fighting for Cage Warriors. And bear in mind, we've seen him nine times now, where, you know, he, he got drawn into a counter-punching mentality. But when he comes forward, uses the hands to set up his takedowns, you know, he's a, a very, very dangerous fighter. Jack Mason doesn't take many risks. He knows that he has the ability to win fights and he kind of reverts back to type, if you like. It'll be interesting to see with the pressure he puts on himself, whether he's willing to take a few more risks. Will that be tonight, however, against a guy who's got legitimate knockout power, anvils for fists? Yeah, what I will say is at the moment, Reuter has only really showed it as being his main weapon. He's thrown three huge haymakers and not much else. And the rest of the time, he's been on the back foot defending so far. So, you know, Jack Mason's having it his own way at the moment. 
Well, he's doing a good job of defending, though, Josh. He found his way back to his feet, and we see a good way of him sort of pummeling <clears throat> round. He's trying to scoop Jack Mason's head and, and body up to his level. Unsuccessful. Yeah, I mean, blue belt, goes over sir, under. blue belt level jiu-jitsu for Colin Reuter. I believe he got awarded that in November of last year. Quite Jack. short for a, a, a pro-level welterweight as well. I think a lot of welterweights coming in over the six foot oh, mark. Jack now Jack Mason jumping yeah, he's, on a guillotine. He doesn't a, love a guillotine. He's got a very, very good guillotine. Good arm in variations. Really, really good squeeze. You see Reuter trying to get his head up and get the grips in, and he bails out to a turtle position. But I mean, this is the kind of fight and position Jack Mason's so familiar with. You can see him threatening the, the choke again, just looking for the chin strap. Mason again, perhaps looking for submission options. I'm very surprised Reuter didn't get hands up to his neck quicker there. Yeah, Mason is really le leaning over, turning his hip in and talking on the neck. Reuter's trying Colin to keep Reuter. the hips away. But Mason's got such a tight grip here. Mason's this really could be in deeper. deep. Oh, he nearly oh, had the it inside up. of his own arm. Well, that surprises me. I honestly thought he was... Making a lot of headway there. Reuter really needs to watch his neck. Again, he's just let Mason sneak that grip all the way through. Yeah, surprised to see Mason abandon that. It looked like he'd got a, a, a lot more leverage yeah, on but the choke. But Mason again, finds that left to, hand. Seems to play it safe, keeping control. And now they're stood opposite one another in the middle of the cage. Yeah, Mason first to the punch on those last couple of occasions. Reuter has finished seven out of his ten fights in the very first round, and most of those didn't get past one minute of cage time. Good knee from Reuter in that exchange, but again, he's on the back foot. Mason's the one pressing forward. I think Reuter's got a, his game plan, he said to oh, us, was to... Oh, good Ooh, jumping, jumping knees. Jumping knee. Nice inside elbow. That's a bit more like it from the Alaskan. Yeah, showing a little bit more of what he's got in his locker. Round one, a pretty decent start for Jack Mason. I mean, Colin Reuter knew that he has to strike to stop Jack Mason taking him down. That's going to be his main weapon. And, you know, we saw that one landed with the cuff, but he's going to wing another. And, you know, if he connects with the forearm, he can still do a lot of damage. But it is one weapon. And once Jack Mason has that figured out and starts wearing him down, that one weapon is going to come with less pace, less power, and less setup. With all of his weight pressing down, Oh, here's a jumping knee, short elbow, nice combination. Finding some openings towards the end of the round. Obviously trying to shut down this contest early with those big looping haymaker-style right hands. Yeah, I do worry, John, though, that the attention he's gotten from that tremendous knockout in February he could get drawn into just throwing that one punch. Yeah, really trying to, as us English would say, hit the guy for six. It's also obviously interesting to see how the travelling is affecting Reuter. He's come quite a long way from Alaska and, you know, as you said in the walkout, John, he's never fought outside of his home state, let alone as far away as, as Alfajira here in the Emirates. Yeah, he certainly lost his, uh, his sense of humour with that travelling as well. <laughs> a lot of changes, a lot of stopovers. But he wasn't going to miss this opportunity to headline a Cage Warriors card. John Gooden and Josh Palmer in the commentary booth for Fight Night 8. Full crew here in al Fajira in the United Arab Emirates. Mason's finding a home with the jab a couple of times. Thanks Sunk. again to Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamad El Sharki for putting on this wonderful event in this laid-back Emirates just east of, east of Dubai. Mason a little flat-footed. And I need to stay on his toes to get out the way of those attacks he's and having, also find some move, some um, find some areas for him to land some shots. He's having some good success with that jab. I'd just like to see him use it a little bit more right now. Either that or really start pushing forward for those takedowns again. They worked for him so tremendously well in the first round. And, you know, if anything, that's a, a brilliant blueprint for him for the remaining minutes of this contest. Mason now with a clubbing right. Starting to move a little bit more laterally. He's a bit back and forth. Be good to see Mason moving off to the sides. 
He's dropping his right hand every time he throws out that jab. Yeah, he just needs to keep making sure he's circling to the right. The last thing he wants to do is walk into that monstrous right hand of Colin Reuter, but it hasn't come with too much frequency in this uh, second round. You can hear the corner, Luke Barnett of Jack Mason shouting for pressure, and I think he's exactly right. A bit more forward pressure, keep Reuter on the back foot, you know, wear him out against the fence again. The more time he gives Reuter here, the more chance there is that he'll find a home with that huge shot. But again, the jab is, is proving a good weapon for Mason. Yeah, Mason's so thick set and he's leaning forward on that jab. That's going to be a hurtful shot. Oh, and as soon as Reuter closes the distance, Mason was on him, but he did take a knee. Yeah, Reuter looking for a, a, a guillotine of his own. Don't think he's quite high enough up on the, the head. Yeah, it was across the face. Mason looking to turn the corner. Again, he's looking he for the arm in guillotine. Can't quite see his grips. It does look like it's reasonably deep, but Mason's immediately burrowing the head in. He's brought the hand up to start stripping the grips. And I think without full control of the body, Reuter's going to find it very hard yeah, Mason's to finish got this very one. very high hips here, really sort of angling his head down to alleviate that pressure. Oh, and there we go. Good defence from Jack Mason, working to the back now. Yeah, Mason, all of his weight, digging his chin into the back of Reuter. Yeah, looking Wearing for... him like a rucksack is the American. Good seatbelt hold for Jack Mason. He's working that almost head and arm choke from the back. Just got to really stay as tight as possible, start trying to work his near side hook in. Lots of control, and this is going to be sapping the energy from the American. Oh, good cross-face attempt from Mason, but that seatbelt hold, hopefully he can... Well, he loosened it up and Reuter got to his feet. Back, seizing on more look, opportunities. Look, look and a for good Mason knee. to drop his weight back here and... Switching the knees there we as go. well, successful with the right. And again, he's seeking out the standing guillotine. Reuter was a little slow for my money in defending those earlier guillotine attempts, trying to sit out. Jack Mason able to just ride it out. Mason, look how heavy it is. Really putting lots of shoulder pressure on that neck. Yeah, there's a few choke Reuter. options from here if he can get the arm deeper, but really it's about control and Reuter's got to be wary of his neck in those positions. Bails out to half guard, tries to scramble back. Mason immediately on that front headlock series again. Last 20 seconds of the second round. Mason wearing very heavy on Reuter now. This is going to start really sapping his energy. Oh, good knee as well. Mason starting to use some of these short shots. Last 30 10 boxing. seconds here. Oh, catching him on the way in. Nice, nice jab, but Reuter opts for that big right of his. Every time Reuter's trying to find a home for that big right hand, Jack Mason's just ducking clean under it. That's what he's so very good at. Yeah. His timing off of a counter is exceptional. It's what we've seen throughout his career. But he's also, we're also looking to see Mason really capitalise on those opportunities to do damage. Yeah, and the beauty of putting his head down like that is even if he does catch a glancing blow, it's the top of his head, which is, of course, the hardest part of the body. There we go, just missing that one. I would like to see Jack Mason try and put a few more of those takedowns in. As soon as he did it, he had really good top control in the end of that round. But, I mean, the jab was working for him. It was nice to see some of his more traditional boxing. Oh, that was a big close. knee. That was close. It was a good attempt to sit out from Reuter, but just going the wrong side. Yeah, we need to throw his leg through to try and twist himself out of that. But with Mason on top of him, so much weight bearing down on you, such a powerful frame. He does it so and very here well. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the final round of the night. Let's hear it one more time for Jiro. Make some noise out there. Yes, indeed, Joe. Ready, 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 ready. Final round yeah. here in Al Fujira. Remember, get using the hashtag CWFN8. Really pleased to be back in the Middle East in 2013. We've really enjoyed what the local fights have put on in the amateur card. We saw the Egyptian Muhammad Ali on our Facebook features.
Don't expect to see Jack Mason take too many chances now. He knows he's probably a couple of rounds up on the scorecards. I think Reuter needs to pick up the pace of his striking here. He needs to throw some straighter shots and then look for that huge overhand right. He's Mason. clearly not going to win the takedown game, so... Mason with very realistic ambitions. He knows what he needs to do to put himself into, into line for a number one contender spot. Another win, another two wins. He knows he's there, and Josh is using that jab very nicely. Yeah, I'd love to see him throw the backhand off it now. Just single shots and the occasional double jab. Oh, oh. that big right. It clipped the chin. Well, it found a home, but immediately... Mason unfazed, yeah. it has to be said. Closes. Oh, looking for the armbar, rolled very nicely, just slightly over-inverted himself there. Well, Mason inside control in a similar position against Matt Enman meant the end of the fight. Reuter gets back to his knees, however. Yeah, he's very wary of these knees coming in, but I think he's got to protect his neck again, just keeping the hands down a bit too, too long. What, is, what can Mason do differently here, Josh, to make this more effective? It's a combination of things. He's got to try and get his hips closer, but he's also got to try and get his, his forearm further across the throat or lock the grip up directly underneath the throat. It, on those kind of chokes, he's going more for cutting off uh, the windpipe and really trying to get a gag reflex submission as opposed to, to a blood choke. Thank you for that excellent breakdown, sir. <laughs> Well, Jack is uh, always looking for control before submission. I think keep and this. as the clock ticks by, this is all scoring in favour of the Englishman. I think keep this chest pressure on him, keep him heavy. Again, keep threatening the grip under the neck. Really breaking the will of the Alaskan native. I mean, this gets tiring for Colin Reuter because he's got to carry all of Jack Mason's weight constantly. And it's free time on top. It's free energy for Jack Mason. Oh, but Reuter looking to work his way to the back. Immediately, Mason bundles his way back in. Yeah, he, he socked him with a good right. It's exactly the right thing for him to do. There was no delay, no getting stuck in no man's land. He just closed the distance for the takedown immediately. And a bit more serious ground and pound now. Jack Mason is like... Like English adhesive, isn't he? <laughs> He's just constantly on you. He's like a bit of Velcro paper. I mean, he will not let you up. Suffocating pressure, it, bell to bell. It's very good top control, and it's it's good continuous pressure. Thudding away now at the head, the dome I think of the American. Seeing a bit of frustration from Reuter, perhaps a little bit of inexperience. Wasn't particularly able to to change his game plan on the fly. Once Mason started controlling these takedowns. One and a half left in round three. Our final round here at the top of our card. Good side wedge position for Jack Mason. Yeah, sneaking through that uppercut. See how he's got his right hand tucked inside to control the hip of Reuter. Try and limit the movement. Really does pick his shots well, Mason. Very efficient with everything he does. There's no sense in leaving the space with a big flurry. He knows he can control the position. He knows he can maintain on top. Such a horrible opponent for so, so many reasons, but just his style yeah. is very wary. Reuter unable to even bail out to retain guard, as we saw Ladis Mackie do earlier. He's just left trying to stand up and Mason is just yeah, well, all over him at the moment. Our American fans are, are literally shouting, get up. It's a, a lot easier said than done, I'm afraid, people. When you've got a man like Jack Mason who is seasoned in keeping a man on the canvas. Such a tight seatbelt hold there when he really gets a grip and you know digs his elbows in, connects his chest. He's really fastened to his opponent. Well, he's back to his feet. At the moment, Mason is tight on his back, though. Back down again to the canvas, and Mason has a bit more sight of his target now. And that signals the end of this encounter. Jack Mason peppers the American for all three rounds. Oh, I think that was a, he avoids the big shots. That was a vintage kind of Jack Mason controlling performance. We know. He can do that so well, and I'm sure he'll be upset that he didn't get a finish, but at the same time, 
That was complete control from start to finish in that fight. Yeah, absolute control. It's like a patented performance from the Englishman. The VKK fighters have had two rounds of success here this evening. Jack Mason heading up that team, showing what a true professional he is. A real seasoned veteran of the sport. As we see this evening, it was that over under control and the precision shots. Every time Reuter tried to escape, Mason just was wearing down on him with his very big frame. Smiling as he marches around the cage, awaiting the acknowledgement of Joe Martinez. I'm going to throw it over to Joe now, who's going to round up that performance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. All three judges have it, 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Jack the Storm!